Jesus. We can worship our way back to our seats. I don't know about y'all, but there's something about when I start calling on that name Jesus that there's a fire that begins to build on the inside of me. And I'm thankful for that this morning, Sister Mama. Thank you. Thankful for that this morning. Mighty God. Our scripture text is going to come initially this morning in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter and the 8th verse. <laughs> be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. The AMPC would say, be well balanced, be temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious, at all times, there it's at all times again. At all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. <laughs> this morning, the enemy is making his presence known in each of our lives. And if you feel as if that doesn't touch you, then you've already been persuaded by the enemy to go ahead. He sang you a lullaby. Go ahead and you don't have to listen to what that man of God is saying. And our bishop is going to pray over the message. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, in your name, Spirit Jesus. God that's in this place, we thank you, God, for those that have gathered to hear your word today. And God, we ask thank you to just anoint your messenger today. My and on our hearts and ears to receive your word. Let your will be accomplished. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, but we're not going to be seated on God. You see, a little bit of study and research on, a, on an actual physical lion. The lion's prey is either larger or faster than they are. And I want you to think about that from a spiritual standpoint as well. But the lion's prey is typically larger or faster than they are. And I didn't know this until... Till just yesterday. So they often work together in family units. Anybody know what a family of lions is called? Pride. A pride. Hmm. Isn't that something? See, you, you see, they may, the lions physically may lack the speed, the size, and the endurance, but they are still known as very fierce and ferocious predators. You see, they stalk their prey. They watch, they harass, and they intimidate their prey. Right. I want you to take that in from a spiritual standpoint as well. As the pride attacks, they cause their prey to panic and to divide and to scatter. Right. To, they panic, they divide, and then they scatter. Right. Can I tell you this morning that no matter the enemy's divisive, diabolical plan, we don't have time in this sanctuary to divide. We don't have time in this place to scatter. We've got to stick together this morning, Sister Tina. We've got to stick together, stand our ground, and fight together. You see, it is in that natural sense with the, uh, the, the lines that once panic strikes, the prey begins to disperse. The pride begins to take note of the weakest. They begin to take note of the weaker party. Their continual attacks eventually exhaust their desired weakened prey. They just keep on and on, Sister Aunt Faye, just approaching them and scaring them. Let that sink in spiritually. Every time one of those fiery darts comes from the enemy, what do you do? When, for lack of better terms, and I know we've all heard that, when the shoe drops, mm -hmm. how do you act? Yeah. Is there a panic? Is there a division? Is there a scattering from God's house? Is there a scattering from God's people? <laughs> Come on. Bless him, Lord. You see that it, when, they, when they discover which one is the weakened prey, the weakest link in, in what they're looking for, the line begins to pounce. The prey is knocked off balance. 
Again, church family, I want you to let that sink in spiritually. That's the way the line works. He knocks you off balance. He drags you down. Uh -huh. Anybody ever been there before? The enemy has drugged you down. And he kills with a bite to the back of the neck or the throat. And just bear with me just a few moments because we're setting a, a little foundation here about a lion. <laughs> it is believed that lions need anywhere from 11 to 15 pounds of meat daily. Brother Jordan, that's a lot of meat. Her line. That's a lot of meat. But the word refers to the devil as a lion having a fierce hunger. A fierce hunger. You see, lions can go without food for about, a, they can go like a week. They can go about a week. But then, when that food deprived lion eats, it ravages that prey. It might go a little while without eating, but when it does, it ravages that prey. And it eats up to 110 pounds of meat. I want you to let that sink in spiritually. Mighty God. Mighty God. What you going to do this morning? Kill it or tame it? I said, what are you going to do this morning? The choice is all yours. Kill it or tame it? Look at somebody and say, kill it or tame it. Oh, come on. We can beat that. Kill it or tame it. 1 Samuel 17 and 23. And as he talked with them, this is David, talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the names, out of the armies, rather, of the Philistines, and spake according to the same word. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled. They fled when they saw that lion approach that battlefield. The men of Israel fled from him. And they were sore afraid. Can I tell you that was, an, that was a lion attack right there on God's children? And how did they react? They reacted just like the prey of a lion. They panicked. They scattered. They were afraid. They divided up. Verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he has come up. Have you seen that lion? Wow, we're, we're really quiet. It almost feels like I'm at the funeral home. Uh -oh. <laughs> Have you seen that line in your life? Have you seen it? What you going to do about it this morning? You going to kill it or you going to tame it? You going to kill it or you going to play around with it? <laughs> but enemy, you don't know what I know. I said enemy, you don't know what I know this morning. And David said in verse 32, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Yeah. Is that you this morning? All right. All right. Are you willing to stand up? And not just stand up, but to vocally stand up and to begin to decree and declare, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm through pulling around with you, Ryan. Trying to tame you. Right. I'm gonna kill it this morning. Yeah, come on. Come on. King David said, Don't be panicked, don't scatter, don't divide, don't leave this battlefield. Yes. <laughs> because the enemy, you don't know what I know this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You keep on messing, and one of these days, my God is gonna bless. Right. Bless him, Jesus. Ask old brother Joe. <laughs> And Saul said to David, thou art, a, thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. It's just like the flesh to tell you, you're not able. Come on. That thing that is coming up against you, you'll never beat it. Come on. It's bigger than you. It's labeled the champion. You can't do it. 
It's, it's funny to me that it's normally the people that are on that sideline not doing anything that can tell you you can't do it. Can I tell you this morning you can do it? Mighty God, kill it this morning. Oh, Brother Saul, you weren't there. Oh, Brother Saul, you didn't experience what I experienced. <laughs> because before there was a 1 Samuel 17, there was a 1 Samuel 16 and 13. And I'm just going to read it right now. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren against the naysayers, against the jealousy and the spirit of the Lord. Somebody say the spirit of the Lord.
But you know what? This morning, Black Zion Pentecostal Church, maybe it's time to rise up against the enemy and declare, for it is written, yeah. my grace is sufficient for me, for my strength is made perfect in weakness this morning. You don't know what I know, enemy. I've come here this morning to kill it all, not to play around with it this morning. Come on. Come on. Amen. Mighty God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Mm. I found this a little bit interesting right here. In the wild, <laughs> why on earth you would ever, ever be in the wild trying to see a lion? Maybe that they, maybe that's not what this meant. Maybe they were just walking around and a lion approaches. We'll go with that scenario because that makes a little bit more sense. In the wild, if you find yourself being approached by a lion, what's the first thing that you would do? I'd run. Argue, argue in OFT. I would run off as quick as I could. And I've read that that will definitely prompt an attack by you running. Will definitely prompt an attack. And this is not Ben and this is not the Bible right here. This is a person that researched a line attack. Various ones. And I found it very compelling in our walk with God. The very first thing that they admonish you to do and encourage you to do when a lion approaches you to attack you is to stand your ground. Continue facing the lion with clapping hands and shouting and waving your arms around to make yourself look bigger than that lion that is approaching you. When's the last time you came into this sanctuary when that lion was attacking you and you said, I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to do my dance. I'm going to wave my hands. So from now on, when you see me up here waving my hands, maybe, just maybe, I sense a lion approaching. I just got to wave my hands because I've got to appear bigger than what is against me. Because of the spirit that abides in me. Yes. Mm. Come on. Jesus name. Kill it or tame it this morning. Oh, yes. I said kill it or tame it this morning. <coughs> Verse 43. And the Philistine said unto David. <coughs> Am I a dog? Be careful what you ask. <laughs> and thou comest to me with stay. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David. Come to me. And I will give thee thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear. Lion, you come to me with that bad attitude. Lion, you come to me with your agenda. <laughs> and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. This morning, I have come here to preach the message. I have come to kill that lion this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It matters not to me how hungry you are for my soul. It matters not to me how hungry you are for the souls of my family and the souls of my church family. I come to you in the name of the Lord. I've come here to kill it off this morning. I was fed up with trying to tame it down. I'm not called to be a lion tamer. Mighty God. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, somebody say this day. This day is a new day. It's a brand new day. With a brand new message. With a brand new authority. With a brand new anointing. If you've never been anointed before. Before the day is out. Before this service is out. I encourage you to come on up. All right. Try it. You will like it. Amen. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. Lion. Mm -hmm. And I will smite thee. And take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day 
unto the fowls of the air yeah. and to the wild beasts of the earth. Yeah. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Can I tell you this morning that there is a God right here at right side to the cross of the And his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 When's the last time you were anointed in preparation for the battle? When's the last time you, you let your inhibitions down and you said, I, I, you were humble enough, you, I, I don't care what I look like. I don't care what I look like coming up. There's a devil that's roaming around with fierce hunger. Our bishop put it this morning, God is fixing to come back. He's fixing to come back. Are we doing our part by killing off the lions this morning or are we just coping with them and taming them? Putting up with them. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. Not by my strength, Sister Tina. Not by my own strength. For the battle is the Lord's. And He will give you into our hands. But I've got to do my part. Right. I've got to do my part this morning. Come on. I've got to stop playing around taming that line right. in my life. I've got to kill it off this morning. Right, right. You can sit there and think it ain't for you, but this is what God gave me for this assembly. All right, it on. is for you, sunshine. Mm. You see, the one that had been anointed with oil by the man of God, the Holy Ghost, began to flow. And he said, I refuse to play with this thing any longer. You've come up against my loved ones for too long. You've come up against my church family too long. That sizing me up, you trying to intimidate me and harassing me, that thing that's trying to cause you to panic, that thing that's trying to cause you to run away from the house of God, that's your line this morning. I'm exposing it to you. You can't leave here today and say, well, he didn't tell me anything about my line. That's your line. That thing that's trying to cause you to panic. Come on. That thing that's trying to cause you to sit down and run away. That is your line this morning. What you gonna do about it? Tame it or kill it. Aha. Mm. The word says that David prevailed. He he was strengthened in himself. It's also a Hebrew word meaning he bound up. That situation. He seized that situation. Right. And then he smote him. He killed him. Right. He didn't play around with him, Sister Mama. Today, I admonish you, prevail over what's stalking you. Right. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Bind it up right. and kill it off this morning. Come on. Right. Second Timothy, the first chapter and the seventh verse. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. You need power? Begin to call on, that, on the God that we serve and to quote His Word. Hmm. He is there to give you the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind this morning. You have it in you to kill that line in your life. How much longer are you going to put up with it? Somebody say kill it or tame it. Kill it. Jesus. Second Samuel the eleventh chapter in the first verse. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joel and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and they besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Tarried still is a Hebrew word, yashab, meaning to sit, to remain, to dwell, to ease self, Brother Jordan. King David, the anointed king, the man after God's own heart, decided to take it easy. And you know, the word does not really specify why the anointed David... It's taking it easy. Exactly. 
I think we can all, Sister Nana just revealed what the issue was. We can all imagine. King David was tired, Sister Teresa. Anybody ever been tired before? For years, he's been fighting tooth and nail against an enemy that was not even really supposed to be an enemy. An anointed brother, an anointed brother in Christ. Wives, children, and possessions were stolen. Bringing the Ark of the Covenant to his kingdom. Sister Samantha, he was tired. Again, anybody ever been there before? Are you tired this morning? Jesus. We have an adversary roaming around. Can I tell you? He careth not if you're tired. Can I tell you that he cares not if you if you're anointed? And just like that physical line, the enemy this morning is looking for that weakest link. He's looking for that weakness inside of you this morning. Verse 2, And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. The first known lion tamer, Henry Martin, he earned the trust of, these, of his big cats by slowly introducing himself to them. <coughs> slowly introducing himself to them. He first interacted with these big cats through the bars of a cage. Earning him a few scratches along the way. A slow fade right there. You see, King David did not view the situation he was in with Bathsheba as a stalking lion. Notice I didn't call Bathsheba a lion. That was not the issue. But the situation dealing with Bathsheba was a stalking lion. And just because King David, the anointed man, did not view it as what it was did not change the fact. This morning, what do you fix your eyes on when you're taking it easy? This morning, you may think, whatever I watch, whatever my eyes see, it doesn't matter. Whatever I'm listening to going down the road, whatever comes in my ears, it doesn't really matter. Can I tell you this morning, kill it or tame it. I exposed that enemy this morning in your life. Kill it or tame it. What lion, I want you to ask yourself this morning, what lion have you slowly introduced yourself to? Just because you don't view it as a lion does not mean that it is not a lion. To tame the lion, you have to get familiar with the lion. You have to spend time with that lion, Brother Zach. Where is your time spent? Where is your time spent? Brother Baldwin said it this morning in Sunday school class that he likes to feed on the spiritual. Because whatever dog you feed the most, <laughs> what do you fix your eyes on this morning? What do you fix your ears upon this morning? <clears throat> that the enemy says, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. Let loose just a little bit. Let this go. Let that go. Can I tell you that this is not a time for that? Because there is an enemy on the loose. And he wants you, you, you. He wants every one of you, even the ones that are not paying any attention to me right now. He wants you. Yes, you. He wants you. You can't leave this place and say, well, that didn't hit me. He wants you this morning. Kill it or tame it. Right. The choice is yours. Right. Even the people that seem to have it all together spiritually, He wants you too. Right. Yes, We've got to stay on our knees just as much because He wants us as well. Verse 3. 
And David sent and inquired after the woman, not knowing that this was a stalking line situation. He inquired after the beautiful woman, and one said, It's not this Bathsheba. You see, that was a voice of reason right there. It's not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And David sent messengers. David sent messengers. And he took her. And she came in unto him. See, he didn't, he didn't listen to that sound word. Would you listen to the sound word this morning? The lion is there in your life. The ones that's been in this all our lives. The ones that are newcomers. The lion is in your life this morning. Wanting to devour you. He's got a fierce hunger. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him. And he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman she conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Stalking line. The anointed man of Israel. The man that is, that is chasing after God's own heart. You see, David schemes and he puts Bathsheba's husband on the front line of the battle. Not just any battle. But Brother Joseph, it was his battle to fight. Right, right. Jesus. It was his battle to fight. Right. Anointed man of God, anointed woman of God, fight that battle, fight that line, kill that line this morning. Right. Don't dare try to tame it. Right. Right. If King David fell, I feel like anybody could. Right. Right. I said I feel like anybody could. And I don't want it to be anybody under the sound of my voice this morning. Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, he dies fighting for King David. He was loyal to King David. Go back and read that story. He was loyal to King David. Amen. And if we will, everybody stand. The musicians be making their way up front. Somebody say, kill entertainment this morning. So Uriah is dead. King David, the anointed man of God's scheme, has worked. Nobody will know that what happened. Maybe there's been enough time there to where nobody will notice. That David is not the father. Maybe, just maybe. Mm -hmm. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her into his house. He thought it was all slicked over. That wasn't a real lion. That wasn't a real lion. Everything's going to be okay, Sister Rara. That was not a line attack. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her into his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. Everybody be making their way up towards the front. But the thing that David had done, it displeased the Lord. That's not men. That's the Word of God. That thing that David had done, the Word of God says it displeased the Lord. When you tame the lion, when you attempt to tame the lion, let me tell you, you are displeasing the Lord. It's one thing if I displease my natural father, which I have several times. It's another thing if I displease or displease my heavenly father. Can I tell you this morning, playing around trying to tame that line in your life, you fall into the category that King David did. You are displeasing the Lord. Verse 7, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed the king over 
over Israel. I anointed you. I anointed you. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I delivered you out of the hand of that lion. I did that for you. <laughs> and I gave thy master's house and thy master's wife into thy bosom. And I gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if it had been too little, I would much over, moreover, have given unto thee such and such things. Can I tell you this morning that God has been good to us? Yes, He has. Has God been good to anybody in the house today? Yes. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? David, you're a lion killer. You're a lion killer this morning. You're not called to be a lion tamer. Right. Right. And I offer you that same mandate that Nathan offered King David. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? We know right from wrong. You know if you've slipped. Nobody's going to tell you. But the flesh will sure tell you. Somebody else will tell you. They'll tell you every time, won't they? Or when you don't do it the way that they think. To do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And hast taken his wife to be thy wife. And hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And verse 15 says, And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very sick. Who paid the price when David decided to tame that lion? For one, that innocent child paid the price. For two, that innocent, well, kind of innocent mother probably didn't have a choice in the matter. She paid the price. And then daddy David, he paid the price as well. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in. And he lay all night upon the earth. <laughs> Famous lion tamer, Gunther Williams. He was quoted as saying that a wild animal is like a loaded gun. A wild animal is like a loaded gun. It can go off at any time. Can I tell you today that there is coming a day when that thing, that lying situation that you've grown familiar with, that you think that you've got tamed down, that lying situation in your life is going to turn on you. No matter how much time and energy and effort you put into it, into trying to tame it and calling it your pet, and I've got this under control. You see, you may think that you've got that sin under control this morning, but can I tell you this morning that it is like a loaded gun? No matter how close you are to it, it is like a loaded gun ready to go off at any given point in your life this morning. No matter how on fire you are from God, King David was anointed, don't forget that, and he slipped. I encourage you this morning.